getting ready to leave PDX. Gotta get you on there, man. Here's my ride. Oh, you, you get to get on YouTube too. Perfect. How are you? <laughs> yeah, I'm doing good. You you drove by, and, I, and I, I'm not gonna say I ran because I can't run. But I'm going. I ain't catching him, so I quit. <laughs> yeah, these guys are. Man. I'm here at Rocky Mountain Wreckers. This is Rick, the owner, and right now we're getting ready to head out with the. 30 ton record we just bought it sitting outside we just going we checked everything out it all works good it's got a heater unlike all my other trucks so we're heading out and rick i thank you very much i do appreciate it thanks George. well i'm about an hour on the road everything seems to be working real well on it oil pressure's holding good uh shimmy shook quite a bit when i first started out but now that the tires are warm it quit shaking so it actually smoothed out pretty good I'm 13 hours and 30 minutes to Ocean Park. Well, it's kind of crazy. Coming into Idaho, they had me bring my papers in. I had to buy a, a $60 permit for a, called the fuel registration permit. I got that, the trip permit. Now I'm less than two hours down the road, I'm stopped at another Idaho scale and they want me to bring my papers in. Nothing like wasting time. Nine hours to get home here. I stopped and slept for about four hours at a truck stop. Oh well, get this done and head out again. I lost an hour at the last truck stop. Well, I got that taken care of. I'm back on the road again. I got uh, eight hours and 52 minutes to Ocean Park. And it's uh, just about seven o'clock in the morning. I'll probably stop somewhere down the road an hour or so and get breakfast and, and get back on the road again. I'll probably won't be home till four or five tonight, it looks like. I'm 30 miles to Emmett, Idaho. I'm gonna stop there in Emmett. I just called my mother-in-law up. She and my father-in-law are gonna meet me at McDonald's. I'll have breakfast with them. I was just gonna power through last night and just head straight home, but I tell you what, when you have a warm cab and a, and a sleeper with a nice bed, it's really hard to say no to that bed. I, I got a little tired. I kept looking back there at that bed. <laughs> I'm going to sleep. I laid down, took about a four-hour nap, and I'm all refreshed. I'm out of here again. Yeah, I, uh, I bought trucks and driven 15, 20 hours, no problem. But man, when you got a bed like, when you got a bed and a cab with you, it's pretty hard to say no. Well, this is nice. I'm about 27 miles to Emmett, and now it's starting to snow and it's sticking on the roads. Hope that's not going to create a problem when I uh, dip to Cabbage Hill. I get my fingers crossed. This is probably that front that they said was coming in Thursday night in Portland. I'm hoping I'll be able to get out of Emmett and beat this over the pass. I don't want to get stuck on 84 West for a day. 
Well, it's still coming down pretty hard. The roads are staying clear. I don't know what the temperature is outside, but I'm sure it's got to be around 30. Uh, I'm going to turn off here and head over to Emmett. I just hope the pass isn't getting hit hard. This is this is probably the front of that storm that's supposed to hit Portland tonight, at 8 o'clock with freezing rain, so we'll see. Off at 80, turned off at 84, head towards Emmett. Boy, these roads look horrible. I'm probably going to have a quick breakfast with Jack and Betty and get to get, and I hope, uh, I hope this isn't what it's going to be like for the next four or five hours. Uh, these side roads are just, it looks like the snow started hitting about probably 15, 20 minutes ago. It was probably clear last night, so this has got to be that storm they were talking about, dang it. Oh well. Anyway, I got about, I got about 31 minutes I'll be in Emmett and I'll have breakfast with Jack and Betty and then I'll see if I can get to the snow and back out on the freeway. GPS, I'm trying to find Emmett. It took me out in the middle of cattle country and sheep and donkeys and mules. I finally got back on a road that's somewhat plowed. I was on a couple of roads that looks like they've never seen a snow plow. Uh, back on, I hope, is the right road here. I'm just following a GPS that says it's 19 miles to Emmett, but man, I've been going in circles for the last 10 minutes. So hopefully this will get me right this time. I'll give her one more shot. The GPS got me turned around again. I'm on a different road. Every place I go, it keeps telling me I'm 18 miles and 19 miles to Emmett. And I, I'm i not gaining anything for the last 20 minutes of driving. I haven't gained but a mile. Uh, I've gone around in circles twice. So I'm going to try this one. If I don't make it on this one, I'm just going to find 84 and head back to head back to Portland. I'm to 17 miles down. I'm on a back country road with uh, more turns and lefts and rights and zigs and zags than I've ever seen. I I don't think there's a main road that actually goes to Emmett. It's all these country roads, I guess, but I'm going to keep plowing along here. <laughs> kind of back out in the middle of nowhere again. Hopefully my GPS is right. It says 4.3 miles. I'll turn and then I'll be uh, headed towards <laughs> Emmett. As near as I can tell, my GPS turned me off 84, looped me clear out north of Emmett, clear out around the outside outskirts of Emmett, clear around to the west side of Emmett and bringing me in from the west side. It's just crazy. I've never seen anything like it. Uh, I'm five minutes to Emmett right now, but uh, it added, I don't know what it did. I was going around in circles, I was out in cattle country, and all I could figure is uh, it, it just took me for a sightseeing tour and uh, added about 20 minutes to drive around in nasty, unmaintained roads. Anyway, I'm on actually a main road right now, I think it's 50, it's called 52, and I'm just coming into Emma right now, I'm going to have breakfast with Jack and Betty, and I'm going to head out. This is my mother-in-law Betty, my father-in-law Jack, brother-in-law Ed. We're at McDonald's and I'm going to get out of here because it's still snowing and I want to get over Dead Man's Pass before they shut down the roads. So I'm, I'm documenting my trip home. <laughs> <laughs> and we're glad George stopped. We had breakfast at McDonald's. I just entered into Oregon. It's just a little bit of rain mixed with some slush snow. Uh, doesn't look too bad. I think I might be ahead of that storm as it goes to hit the gorge. I'm going to leave a mark. Yeah, I just saw the police pull out. That must have just happened. I don't know, I don't know how the idiot wrecked there. That's a third roller where I tend this road in about the last 15 miles. I'm still 92 miles to Cabbage and we got the passing lane is frozen. My lane isn't looking really bad. It it's, looks like they've kept the snow off of it, but the, uh, the other lane's got just a shit of ice on it. 
so I've had to slow down. We got 92 miles to cabbage. That's the, probably the worst pass to have to go over. Baker roads are about the same. I got a fairly clean lane for me, but the passing lanes a sheet of ice and not very not very safe. Uh, still around about 28 degrees outside. I'm 80 miles to Cabbage Hill, so that'll that'll probably tell us what the rest of the gorge is going to be like when we get to Cabbage. Town last night about seven o'clock. This is the new truck. We got a buy a couple pieces for it. The fender wraps are broken on both sides. Uh, come out of California. I guess I think down, down in California. It's uh, noted for having a huge prison there, I guess. Anyway, everything on it works. It's got a massive wheel lift on it. This wheel lift goes back 128 inches. A uh, couple, it's got a remote control for the, uh, wide remote for the wheel lift. I've got a did a little work on that. It's got a, it's a jiggle to plug in and it seems to work, but you have to jiggle it so we gotta get that fixed. Back here is where the, uh, we got an issue with this thing back here, but some of that we're gonna take off. I don't think I'm gonna keep all the, uh, all this cladding back here. I just soon have it. It's just a big open spot and I don't need it. So I'm gonna get rid of a lot of that. I'll just get the fender right up here and a step for the fuel tanks and call it good. I think I'll probably put some smaller fuel tanks on it. Maybe put a fuel tank with a step on it. I'd like to get the ground clearance up a little higher for going off-road. Anyway, it all ran out good. It's got a Detroit 60 series engine on it. Ran about 65, 70 miles an hour. Ran probably right about seven, seven miles, seven and a half miles per gallon. Uh, it all worked out good. It had a nice sleeper in the back. I took about a four hour uh, nap night before last. Gotta get it cleaned up, get all that little stuff fixed on it now. Well, we got a couple of things we gotta fix. We got a dent in the crossbar. We gotta get that fixed. We'll be working on that. Got a 128 inch wheel left. Boom, of course, back must be close to close to 10 feet. That's gonna work out good. Everything out works so far. A couple little minor things to work on, but other than that, she'll be ready to tow here. We're gonna try and get it painted next week. Well, we got a couple of things we gotta fix. We got a dent in the crossbar. We gotta get that fixed. We'll be working on that. Got a 128 inch wheel left. Boom, of course, back must be close to close to 10 feet. That's gonna work out good. Everything out works so far. A couple little minor things to work on, but other than that, she'll be ready to tow here. We're gonna try and get it painted next week.